Good afternoon. Please, are we getting some questions online? All right, let us know as well. I'll be very brief with them. <clears throat> What's the best age for a man or woman to get married? None exist. Marriage is not for boys, it's not for girls. As far as you're not a boy and you're not a girl, you can marry. Amen? So, marriage age, no. Nonetheless, we need to consider what is the purpose of marriage. If the two of you getting married would defeat the purpose of marriage, then we need to consider. Number two, are you first-time married couple? You know, some people can marry. Their spouses might have died. They were divorced. They have early children before they want to remarry. So all these dynamics will come to play. But certainly, marriage is not for children. I was 26 when I was married. My wife was 24. I could have married when I was 24 because I was sorted. But if you take someone 24 married and you are 27, so you think you are married, it's not a race. We need to check the KPIs. Are you indeed ready? Do you have the four trees? The trees good for eye, pleasant to the eyes good for food, good for food and the rest of them, all the things we share. So there is no age. The question is, are you prepared economically, spiritually, emotionally, physically, in all dimensions? So no age for marriage. Two, what are your thoughts about remarriage for widows and widowers? Great idea. Why can't widows and widowers get married? As far as you are marrying somebody, and you are not violating any biblical principle. Why not? A 65-year-old woman or 70-year-old woman can be married. Amen? Don't let anybody's cultural norm put you to the coffin before your time. If you are 90 years and you still have power in your quiver, you can manage a woman. Please, go ahead in the fear of the Lord. Somebody say an Amen. Question number two. Pastor, I like this guy, but my parents don't like him because of his social status. He's a good man, but they don't understand. They don't understand. What should I do? I am financially stable. He is not, but we love each other. Great idea. Now, sit down and have a conversation with your parents. Mind you, your parents have a point. If he's not able to take care of a home as a man is expected to do, they have a genuine fear. I, as a father, I'll be worried. Nevertheless, please don't discount this. You see, sometimes when you are young, you have butterfly flowing in your system. You want a man who will be telling you sweet things. So you throw away wisdom. Everything is thrown away to sway. No. Sit down. Analyze. The man, I'm, the boy or the young man we are talking about He's a good man. What is his problem? He doesn't have financial stability to take care of a home. So, sit with your parent. Tell them these are the positives. Out of ten, I'll give him nine. So, set out a timeline. Sit with the young man. You know I love you. You know you love me. But the difficulty is that a man must be a man. So, in light of that, we want to recommend and say that in the next one year, let's prepare so that we can see how we can help each other for you to be economically on your feet. Are you getting the point? What must be done to elevate his economic status? It should be done. But don't discount what your parents are saying. And parent, don't throw a good man out because he is currently unemployed or currently not financially stable. But if he doesn't have a job at all, don't marry him. I repeat, don't marry him. But if he's working... He's just not yet there. Please, don't throw away a good man because today he cannot afford. Amen? Number two, tables 10. In life, tables 10. So, I will state and state carefully again. Don't throw a good man out on account today he doesn't have money. Some of you, when you were out of school, you had nothing. And sometimes parents... Because of your social standing, you want your children to be in that social standing. I know. Don't overcast your status too much on your children. They have their parts to also run. 
But young lady, don't think your parents are demons. They have genuine concern. I will raise the same. Nevertheless, you see, I've answered in two ways. We need to come to the middle and find a way. Sometime, if you are a parent and your will-be or potential son-in-law is economically incapacitated, and there is a way you can lend the hand, why not? It is not out of order. It is not out of order. But no young man should feel he's entitled to a help before he marries and take care of a woman. No, nobody owes you anything in the world. Question number three. What is your take on older women dating younger, older women to younger women? Older women to younger women relationship? No, it cannot happen. But if you wanted to say older women to younger men, I will address it. But what I read here is, what is your take on older women to younger women relationship? I interpret this to mean lesbianism. So no. But if it is an error, you want to say older women dating younger men, then let me address it that way. I want to assume without, as, uh, I want to assume without admitting. There is nothing wrong with an older woman dating a younger man. Say amen to that one. Why? Show me where it is wrong in the Bible. Ah, ah. Ah. Look at these people. <laughs> come and beat me. If you like, come and beat me. <laughs> ah. A woman is 35. A young man is 30 years. Why can't they be married? Now, if it is you are not comfortable... Say, I am not comfortable. Don't make it a rule and say it is wrong. There is nowhere it is stated in scripture that a woman must be older than a man. As far as the two parties meet the criteria for marriage, the purpose for marriage, they, they are ready to pick up their responsibility. The man wants to be a spiritual leader. He can take care of a home. He can, listen, there is nothing like that in scripture. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, are you both suitable for each other? Are you first-time couples? A young man is 30 years. A woman is 60 years. They want to get married. I will advise them. It's not the best. But it's not a sin if they do. Do you understand that? Hear me well. You see, sometimes don't, don't, don't project your, your thoughts and elevate it to truth. Let me say it again. For the fact that you are uncomfortable with something, doesn't mean it should be a rule for all of us. Hello? Hello? When a man is 30, a woman is 60, they want to get married. Is it a sin? Yes or no? Is it the best? Who told you? <laughs> You only need to tell them the challenges. Ah, two old people have come and they want to get married. I can't say no in light of the Bible. I can't say no in light of the spirit of prophecy. Nevertheless, you ask the question, do you want to have babies? As there are some issues, do you know the health implications? The possibilities? These are issues you raise and you let them see the potential dangers. So, but if a woman is two years, three years, five years older than a man, what is wrong with it? Nothing. But if you are not comfortable, why not? But if the two of you are comfortable and you've gone to counseling and your counseling have exposed you to the dangers, the difficulties that may come with it, both of you agree and want to make a vow before God to be loyal and faithful to each other till death do you part. We will bless that marriage. What betides you if tomorrow you come to tell us you are not comfortable? You'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. How can or does a young woman let a man lead in a relationship without looking like a dominant member of the relationship? All right? Two things you need to consider. 
Number one, we need to know the personality of the persons involved. What is the trait of the man? What are his strengths? What is his personality framework? If we know this, then we can tell. When you say a man must lead, it doesn't mean a woman is a zombie. It doesn't mean a woman doesn't think. It doesn't mean a woman cannot object. It doesn't mean a woman cannot oppose. It does, listen, that is not it. I have a presentation on the, the dynamics of submission. When the Bible says a woman must submit, what does it mean? Don't make the mistake and say that, oh, the Bible says a man is a head. So, no, 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 no. You have your own head. He wants you to eat beans. You said, I'll eat rice. He said, beans. You say rice. You say, beans. You say, okay, I'll cook the beans for you. I also eat my rice. It's okay. But the fact that he's a leader doesn't mean he said beans, it must be beans. He said rice. He said ugali, it must be ugali. It's chapati, it must be chapati. No, 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 no. So, be yourself. Nevertheless, uh, in issues where you think it is making sense, you do. When a man is leading, he's leading you to a ditch, you must not follow. Amen? We are going into a ditch. You need to raise your hand. Excuse me, we, we are going to die. We are going to die. So express your thought. You want to, you want to buy a land as couples. And he says, we are buying it here. No, you have to do your research and come and say, honey, guess what? Where you said we should buy the land is not a bad place. As I check, these are the advantages at this place where you are saying. Nevertheless, I went to check at this side. These are what I've seen. The data indicates that in every 12 months, land appreciates in this area by this percentage. Houses in this area, when built, these are what they are paying for. Looking at this, it will make economic sense if we do the investment in this place instead of that place. I want you to go and cross-check and see so that we'll come back before we take the decision. Stake your thought as a woman in the decision. Amen? And do it with sens sensibleness and with decency. And there is a way. You should know your man and know when to speak for issues to be taken serious, when to speak for him to dismiss it. Sometimes when men dismiss things, humbly say, I understand, but I still think we should look at it again. Honey, please, I still think we should do it. If it fails, when you go to sleep, rub your head around his head and say, honey, please, I still think we should do it this way. And give him overdose and he will change his mind. Then another question. Touch on age difference when dating for marriage. I address it in one other one. Somebody says, if you are already married and it's not working, a lot of cheating, abandonment. Is it okay to ask God if he wants the marriage to work or is it too late? What is the sign? What is, what is the sign? Or answer is no. Do, okay. In other words, the person is saying, you are married. He's cheating. He's not even giving you emotional connection. Uh, do you need to pray and be asking God that this should lead work or is it too late to divorce? I, I wrote here, it's your choice. If he is cheating, the Bible has given you a framework, Matthew 19 verse 9. You can divorce a man on account of him cheating. You can divorce a woman on the grounds of infidelity. When a man is cheating, it's now a lifestyle. It's now, we call it now chronic situation. My sister, you may get disease. I repeat and quote me, I'm on the pulpit. You may get the disease. Call him to order. Let him know the rate of his cheating. It's becoming too much. You can't take this. Now, two, take him to hospital. Insist on doing HIV or ST, STD test. Now, if you notice, this cheating is not helping. Some of you, that's what I'm coming to talk about. My last presentation is about, I have broken my marriage vow. I've been cheating. What do I do? Solution today. Now, the thing is not working. You move right. Uh, uh, he's cheating. You move left. He's cheating. You move forward, he's cheating. You pray, you fast, and he's cheating. My sister, please, you have a choice to stay. And he's cheating. It is your decision. However, from a biblical perspective, the Bible has given a window for a person to choose, to trigger a condition. Jesus and God says that can annul a marriage. Matthew 19, verse 9. You can leave a spouse on the grounds of cheating. Infidelity is a ground for divorce. But if a man cheats, if a woman cheats, and your spouse 
is the offending partner and is willing to make amends, change ways. You don't need to let the world be aware. Deal with it as a family. But if it's becoming a pattern too often, yourself, your children may be at risk. The choice is yours. I've said what the Bible says. If that is clear, somebody say an amen. How does our deal, okay, how does one deal with a husband or man who was brought up in a shaky family background, one that, or came to learn later, he lacks leadership traits as a man. He cheats a lot. We have children. Is it wise to break the marriage? Number one, Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4, through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all good and precious riches. Number one, if he's a weak knee man, enroll him to a master class, $500, we'll train him. Don't do it sarcastically. We are building a community of men who will take a stand to say, we'll become fathers indeed. We are building a community of married women who are going to say we are going to be the best women we possibly can be and support. Listen, we don't know, but sometimes we feel we know. When somebody is brought up in a certain way, you have given a background. His upbringing is faulty, is defective. Now, this is where he has found himself. We need to now dig back into time and analyze the situation and put forth what we call some intervention strategies that will strengthen the man to be the man he possibly must be. We are okay to go to hospital. We are okay to go for uh, treatment. We are okay to do this thing. But the only time we, are, we take it lightly is when we are ignorant and stupid. We don't want to learn. Sometimes you know, but I told you here, you don't know enough. So we need to upgrade it. Sometimes men must sit only at the table for us to have men's conversation. And the conversation is guided by people with scripture, people with data, people with insight. It doesn't come with age only. It comes with knowing it. Knowledge is power. My people are destroyed for lack of all knowledge. Number two, cheating. He needs to be converted. It's a sin problem. Only the Holy Spirit, through the power of his word, can do so. It's a long one, but in summary, okay, dear pastor, according to the Bible, some sins are not to be forgiven, like abominable sin. So if somebody cheats with your wife, must you forgive him? All right. I refer to Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to verse 33. All manner of sins can be forgiven. Adultery, fornication, all of them, they can be forgiven. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The only sin that cannot be forgiven is a sin against the Holy Spirit. So if somebody sleep with your wife, are you mandated to forgive him? A capital Y, E, S, exclamation sign, seven, yes. It's tough. It's not simple. If it's in your church, relocate from that church. Go to another church. Put, install in place things that will not cause that to reoccur. Do a detailed analysis. Why will my wife cheat on with another man? What are the causes? Get to the root cause of it and look at it really. Don't quickly address it. It's not a prayer matter. Please. It's not a prayer matter only. There are existential physiological situations and needs that led to that. So deal with it comprehensively. And if possible, you may need deep counseling. Commercial break. To Pastor Mensah, how do you handle a husband who has no time with the family? Every time he's in, in the home, it is either his cell phone or the news. The only thing he can ask is, how was your day? Number one, the women are mean. I'm regretting I've not given a presentation on women. 
I'm regretting. If I give a presentation on women, all of you will be quiet. You'll go. <laughs> Nobody will talk. Everybody will know their level. But because yesterday I spoke about men, it's now like women have gotten, they are just hitting everybody here. If a man is just engrossed with his phone and watching television, these are the fruits. There are deep existential problems. Number one, the family's communication is bad. Maybe the man and the woman are not at the same communication level. Maybe it may be that they don't have the same intellectual power to be able to discuss. Maybe when it comes to the things he wants to talk about, the woman doesn't have the ability to comprehend and contribute meaningfully. Some of you, the women, you are stupid. Because when we come home and we are talking about serious things, all you are thinking about is, you are thinking about unnecessary things. And sometimes, it may also be, he's emotionally detached, he's cheating. It may be, all the emotional satisfaction, he's sorted somewhere, so he doesn't. Sometimes it may also just be that he's just irresponsible or careless and reckless. It may not be that he's a bad man. You see, I've given various situations. It's not just one jacket. So number one, prompt him. Make an attempt. Engage him in a conversation when he's bad. Redirect his attention from the television and the cell phone. By the time he's coming home, have an agenda set out. How you are going to engage the three hours before bedtime. When it persists, prompt him that you want to talk. You feel you are lonely. You don't know if he's asking you to start looking for emotional attention elsewhere. The last thing a man wants to see is to see somebody sleep with a wife. The most beautiful woman is your woman in another man's arm. So have a real conversation. When it persists, look for somebody he respects. And this may apply to women as well. The person is asking from a woman's perspective. It may apply to a man's perspective as well. So look for somebody who he or she respects. And come to the table with a discussion. So that let's put some intervention strategies. Because the problem here is that technically there is no marriage. There is no marriage. It's dangerous. It should not be taken lightly. I just want to know if it is right for a husband who is also an Adventist to have called on his mobile phone, which is kept secret only to himself. Won't it raise some suspicions with this kind of lie? Possible. I don't know who the person, you see, for example, some individuals, they have people's private issues with them. Ordinarily, why should a man put a code on his phone the wife is not aware? Why? No. If you can see, both of you, your nakedness, what is it on the phone that she cannot see? I repeat again. If both of you can be naked, and the two of them were naked, both of you have been having intimacy, the highest level of secret in a person's life is their nudity. You can have access to the woman's nudity. She can have access to your nudity. Now, your mobile phone, what is there? Assuming without admitting, there are sensitive issues there. Then let's come to the table and have a discussion. I'm not comfortable with your way your phone is so secretive. And even if you are going to bath, you are carrying it. If, no, it's suspicious. So if you have sensitive information, people's issue that cannot be, Chances are that if a man is behaving like that, he's also saying that my wife cannot keep secrets, her mouth runs, a lot of variables will come to play. But if it is because I want to assume without admitting that the man has a legitimate reason, then let's get another phone that will handle the private issues and let one make me feel fine that my wife, husband is not hiding anything. Let's be transparent. Let's stop the play. In many instances, he's cheating. I'm sorry. I'm not saying in all instances. Let's be, listen, let's stop playing games in the, in the house of God. What is it is on this phone that the woman is going to see? Or that your husband is going to see? For which there must be a password and it's only known as secretive to you. I repeat, if it is a confidentiality issue, get another phone with a password secretive only to you so that all those matters may go there. 
How can you live in a marriage like this? It's bad. I'm sorry. Thank you, Pastor, for the insightful session, the entire week. What do I do after realizing that I have a male figure instead of a man in my house? How do I help my husband to become a man and not a male? Please. I'm tempted to say, let me stay here till tomorrow. Hey, all of you must come here tomorrow evening. Let, let, me, let me go on the women. It's like now the women have this thing and it's, it's, it's only about men. Hell that. Now I am feeling guilty as a man. I have learned my lesson. Never again. I will present the women first before I present the men. So let's assume you have a female in your house, not a woman. You see the way the room is quiet? She is not a woman. She is just a female. She is technically irrelevant to what women stand for. She's only there as an object called a woman. How do you handle it? Number one, if you love her, invest in her. If it's a man, you need to do it. Men, we have ego. So you need to be wise as a woman. The Bible says a wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one brings it down. So if a woman is the female and not a woman, what you need to do is invest in training, uplifting her up. Number two, how do you do that? What are the difficulties she's facing? What are the shortfalls of her not being a woman but a female? When we look at this, let's put in the intervention strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing we are calling marriage, being a man, being a woman, the problem is some of us, Listen, we have not been brought up in that manner. You will admit that during this week, there were things that we all studied. I did not know all of them myself. Are you getting the point? We are learning every day. So when you notice, oops, in light of God's revealed truth this week, my husband is falling short of God's ideal as a man. Please, any way that can be done, and do it tastefully. Do it respectfully. Because you, the woman saying he is not a man but a male, you are maybe not even a female, below a female. So when you notice that, first, there must be training and education. You need to see the areas where he is not keeping it up. Sometimes he lacks the technical skills. And we've now exposed ourselves to it, but now training must happen. Training must happen. Mentorship must happen. You can be 70 years. A 30-year man can train you. You can be 60 years. You can learn from a younger child. Men, let's set aside the ego. Let's get to class and learn. I am still learning. I'm still studying how to be a good preacher. I'm still learning how to be a good communicator. I'm still learning how to be a good husband. I'm still learning how to be a good father. Nobody has arrived. So being in a place where we all learn together should not be as if I am the problem and sick. So if there is this situation, we need to come to a conversation and tactfully, tastefully put it across so that we all join and begin to study. It's education and training and studying and practicing saying that will solve the situation. Please help address the issue of bride price, dowry, it has, become a, it has become commercialized in our societies today. No, I can't deal with it. Somebody's daughter. And he says, this is what we will take before we marry our daughter. Go and prepare. What's your problem? Now you want me to come and say that, no, bring it. No, 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 you don't do that. The purpose of a dowry is to show the preparedness of a man in picking a woman. If you see the historical trends, dowry from culture to culture differs. If you go to Nigeria, if you go to some communities, you need some level of cows before you can marry. Things are changing in the modern day. 
but assuming without admitting. And the first question is, who told you that the dowry expected from a certain place is commercialized? Every family have their standard. Where you are getting to, that is the standard. So first, stop the entitlement behavior as a young man. They are commercializing the bride price. Please, if you are not up to your standard, go for your standard. How <laughs> ah, can you be talking as if they are commercializing it? And it's so entitlement. No. Commercialized by whose standard? <laughs> ah, me, I've taken care of my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you think you bring me two, two bottles of malt and, and fowl and come and take Susan? I'm waiting for you. <laughs> ah, what is this one? <laughs> but sometimes, the parent, you just see, especially, let me say this, every good man knows a good man. Let me say differently. A man knows a good man. Chances are they're better than a woman if he knows God's word very well and knows the ideal. All right, so the issue is if you spot a good man, your daughter wants to marry, uh, uh, sometimes lacks it a little. But sometimes the parents just want to see if you man up. I've seen places where dowries and things were broad, and after the marriage, the parents gave back to the couple. But don't be entitled as if you have the right to regulate what must be taken as a dowry. It's disrespectful to your prospective in-law. I will not countenance that. If you come, I'll sack you from my house. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have two more to go. I'm in a relationship with an SDA guy. And I want to practice purity till marriage. How do you restrain yourself? Given the fact that I have had this conversation with him and he didn't take me serious and we slipped into the routine of sexual immorality, which has brought a lot of guilt over time. How do I handle it? Honest question. Go to YouTube and look for my presentation, Taming, Temptation, Taming Temptation, 10 Top Ways of overcoming sexual sin. I looked at it from the perspective of Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7 to verse 23. Ten ways to deal with sexual impurity, immorality. Now, so the quick basic point. How do you deal with the concept of immorality when the two of you have sat down, convicted that God's word expects us to live a life of purity? So first, have the conversation. Number two, look for accountability partners. Number three, avoid the two of you being alone. 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 If not, even if we put a Greek Bible on it, it will not stand. It will fall. It will fall. All right. So look for that. There are practical things to put in place to overcome sexual sin. When I was dating Samola, whenever I'm going, I'll go with Pastor Holy. He was my colleague. I'll go with Mordecai. I'll go with this. When we want to have private conversation, we are sure we are not in a private space. So we can go to a garden. My friends can be having their time. We are at a place to have our serious conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy. Sometimes I look at my Dell girlfriend and my whole body say, hey, what is this? It's too much for me. Maybe you, you are holy. That is why I'm saying my about myself. So what I'm saying, I'm being practical and real. I don't like theory. I like being practical. Lest I forget. In case it's becoming too much. Also, you can use the power. Two things that will make sexual edges reduce is the power of the word. Whenever you are in the world, take your morning devotion serious. And every morning tell the Lord, dear Lord, I want to honor you. I want to do it to your glory. As I wake up today, just for today, keep me pure. Keep me pure. Keep me pure. Keep me pure. Just for today. When tomorrow comes, you ask for the same grace. A day at a time. Watch the music you listen to. Watch the content you listen to. All these will stimulate sexual air. Control the things that enter your mind. You have power 
over them. What is your version, your view, sorry, on marriage and divorce? No, I have no view. The Bible has a view. Is there an age limit for marriage? So my answer is, the Bible's view on divorce is, and remarriage, is this. Matthew chapter 19. If you study it very carefully, you can only divorce if there is, there is sexual immorality, adultery. Now, the one who is the guilty partner, if you cheat on your spouse and she decides to divorce you, she has a right to marry. The guilty partner, if you are married, a man and a woman, can I get a Bible, my Bible? Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let, 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 let me address it so that you get it very clear. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Let's go. From verse 7, they said to him, okay, from verse 4, and he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them, okay, but if you read from verse 1, they were asking, can you, suck, can you divorce a woman on the grounds of anything? And he says, no, you cannot do that. You can only do that on the basis. And he says, verse 9, I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adulteries. And whoever marries her, who is divorced, commits adultery. What the context? I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. It means you can divorce your wife, you can divorce your husband, on the basis of sexual immorality, adultery. However, Jesus added, whoever marries her who is divorced wrongly also commits adultery. So the context is this. You can only marry a divorcee if the marriage was annulled biblically. In other words, if the marriage was not annulled biblically, the two of them are regarded still married in the, in the, in the eyes of God. That's why Jesus says, whoever marries her who was wrongfully divorced, also commit adultery. Do you understand? So, I and Samuela, I divorced Samuela, not on the grounds of adultery, God forbid. Now, anybody who marries Samuela commits adultery. Why? Before the eyes of God, she is still regarded as T.K. Manson's wife. Do you understand? Jesus was attempting to do all he could to avoid divorce. But if it must be divorce, there are conditions that must be met. There must be adultery. In other words, even if somebody commits adultery, Samuela decides to divorce me or divorce me that I've committed adultery, she can be married. It is only after she's married I can be married. The reason is that I'm the guilty partner. You don't get it. We need a Bible study. But the basis for divorce must be infidelity, adultery. Do you understand? There must be adultery. There must be adultery. So anybody marrying a divorcee, you must know the history. Can you, can you put it back again? You must know the history. You must know the history. Please take it very carefully. The church has a stand. Take the church manual and look for marriage and remarriage. Is there? And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. In other words, if it is on the grounds of immorality, you have not committed her adultery. Number two, and whoever marries her, who is divorced, commits adultery. In context, the woman was not divorced rightly. She, had, she, she did no evil, and she was divorced. You need a Bible study, but check the church manual on the page on divorce and remarriage. It is very clear. The way you are looking at me, you need a Bible study. Last one. Is it wrong to engage in a slight romance when dating? 
Keyword. Slight romance in capital. Underline. I.E. Pecking. Or giving a peck. All right. My response to that is, the book of Proverbs says, who puts a fire in his belly and says it will not burn him? It begins with a peck. Then you upgrade to a kiss. Normal kiss. From a normal kiss, we go down. They say, is it Naaman? Who had lep leprosy? Naaman? We had a song when we were children. It says, he went down, down, down. We'll be going down, down. Before you'll be going from peck, down, kiss. From kiss, down, down, down. So, don't worry. You want to kiss a woman? You are going to kiss her many times. Just take your time. Just relax. A time will come. A hug can be accepted. We can go with that. But I'm not here to legislate the do's and the don't. But anything that will arouse sexual desires are not acceptable. Remember, Jesus says, adultery is not only penetrative sex. It's even when you, last after a, you look after a woman lustfully. And I also add, you look at a man lustfully. You have committed adultery in the heart. I am done. God bless you. What do we say? Do you want us to continue or we end? Ah, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, um, the program we have is we are now coming to closer to the end, and I want really to thank you so much. I want to thank Dr. and uh, Pastor for, for the patience. Pastor says he has one question, and uh, obviously he has to answer. So let Pastor answer. Please, the online viewers, I have been unfair to you. They've asked a lot of questions online. But we want to pick one of them and address them. He said, Pastor, a husband has been away in most of their 20 plus years together. The kids are now grown and he's still away. She's so lonely in marriage. What will she do? They've even grown apart in most aspects. This is what we call abandonment. Now, I'm going to be very technical. The, the Bible says divorce must happen within the context of abandonment or immorality. Sometimes, Practical situations make us legislate further things that undermine the authority of Scripture. My recommendation number one, the man as far as he's on earth, let's call the family members of the woman. They should visit the man's family members with immediate effect. They should send a word to him. Is he interested in this marriage or not? They should give him an ultimatum. If it fails, the woman must, be, must travel to where he is. How can you leave a woman for 20 years? He must make his intention close and known. But you see, if you are not careful, you begin to say, oh, 20 years, the marriage is over, they should divorce. The question is, you may be legislating something that is unbiblical. It's a very dicey area. We preach fidelity to the Bible. So in this instance, the man must be pulled to a place where he must state his thoughts. If he's in a church, he must be brought. If he's in a company, the company bosses must know. He must be brought to bear to give a stand. I won't be surprised. He's already off. 20 year old man? No. He's shut down. But it's difficult to use abandonment. Somebody says, my husband leaves me for one year. I can't stay. I'm divorcing. Another person, three months. Four. If you are not careful, it can get messy. So in light of this, the Bible did not say marriages are annulled on the grounds of abandonment if you look at the Bible very well. However, practical conditions like this, we need to put in intervention for the guilty partner to declare his stand on this matter. The person 
asking the question, please reach out to me privately. Let's find a practical solution to it. For those of you who ask questions online, I will take time and go to look at the questions. And if need be, I will connect with you personally on the issues that concerns me. And Doc may do the same as well. Thank you.